Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Sponsored by Hobbling Pen. We're back and we're going to show you a bunch of stuff today. Ryan, do you have some stuff to show? I have a little something, Sid. Okay, and I have a lot of little somethings. Yes, you do. And uh, I'm going to show that after I show the new stuff. You know, it's okay. the last day of the month today. Yep. So we had our Gundam truck arrive. And we have some new kits. Sweet. Here's the HD, you know, more Gundam age stuff. This is Dorado. And it's pretty much like the Zedits and the Gat Ryan, except it's that purplish color. Now you mentioned you actually watched an episode. And I it watched was... an episode this last weekend. And how bad was it, Sid? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that, because <laughs> it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> absolutely dreadful. You know, I thought, you know, I'll give it a whirl. It's got Gundam suits flying around fighting, and I don't mind the Gundam Age suit itself. Yeah. But the storyline was so textbook, so cliche, like, I could have written it. Does it say Ovum? What does it say? Ov over me. Of me. Of me. It's not an ovum, is it? It's just a. It's just a code of the suit. So oh. this, is, this is the Zetus R, and again, it's similar to the Dorado and the Zetus. Right? And uh, it will also change into its flight mode. Mm, yeah. Transforms. It does transform. So and if this you like one? transforming kits, Ryan, then uh, maybe gun images for you. This is, I, on the other hand, this is looking a bit like Evangelion, actually. Like, I don't know, it's an e like Evangelion, yeah. And a bit skinnier. I, on the other hand, am going to be doing the Master Grade. Ah, and that arms. is nice. Yeah, it's pretty wicked. This is the last, uh, this might be the last Master Grade uh, head, um, Wing Gundam e Endless Waltz kit we see for a while. Now, this year is the uh, 10th anniversary of Seed, as we've discussed before. And Bandai is focusing on that with the uh, Dual Assault Shroud MG coming out soon and all the HD remasters. Mm -hmm. So with this one, I'm going to have to enjoy it because you might not see another wingsuit for a little while. And there's the manual. Now, some people were asking previously about the Gatling gun. Yes. And if it can uh, be swapped on either hand. The answer to that, I believe, is no, because I actually went to the runner. This is the Gatling gun runner. And these two parts you can see here, which is how it attaches to the suit and is grabbed onto by the, the, uh, the hand. They are not the same. Okay. And only the uh, the handle will fit on this one, on the one side. So it doesn't look like the Gatling gun will swap. And another question people were asking is, uh, maybe you can show it here. Can we get a close-up of this thing, this picture? You can see all the missile pods are open here. Yes. And uh, the missile pods in this image are a different color. Yes. People are asking uh, if this is how it comes. Some of the test shots had shown they were the same color. Yep. Well, uh, if you do want to uh, take your time and work on the missile pods and change the color, you can do that because of how Bandai has designed it. Here's all the little missiles. Mm -hmm. What happens is you can uh, paint these and you'll be putting a piece on over top when you assemble it. And just these circles will be oh, protruding okay. up. So you could like paint those? Yeah, if, if you, you want to make it like the red, like yeah. the missile, missile pods on the uh, full armor gun, which we just showed, you just take your red paint or gun a marker, color over the top once it's dry. Assemble it and you'll get that effect. Sweet. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm going to be uh, a busy boy for the next couple of days. This is uh, the same more or less as the other um, wingy W seats. Where's my runner? If we built the Shenlong and the Sand Rock, we've yeah. shown these on the show, you can see these pieces. It's also the Death Scythe and the, uh, the wing. All these pieces and the, leg, the knee pieces here, all these are common okay. in all the wing kits. So if you've built an MG Wing kit before, this is going to yeah. be no problem for you. You'll be able to do the legs at least yeah. in your sleep. And once it's done, we're going to bring on the show and show everybody just how awesome the heavy arm is. Nice box art as well. Yeah, the heavy arm's box art, yeah. or the wing gun and box art has been really good so far. And I actually saw the uh, box art for the, uh, the newest spec seed MG that comes out next month. The dual salt shroud poster gun. That box art is... Two thumbs up from me. It's this, gonna be great. Was that the one in the magazine? Yeah. Yeah. It's that was cool. It's in the latest hobby magazines here in Japan. So you can check it out. So that's all I gotta show for the new stuff. Ryan, it's now your turn. Your time to shine. It's my turn show to shine. What you got. Well, I'm showing something that has been seen before. Okay. But I'm actually gonna start it. Oh, you actually decided you're gonna. Do I'm this gonna thing. do the Falcon. Okay. And Sid, mm -hmm. I'm gonna need some help from you. Okay. Because I don't have an airbrush set. I also do not have an airbrush set. But we have done uh, spray painting in the past. Yeah, we did spray painting, I think, in episode 14. 14. We did 12. 
One of those two. Now I think it might be good to do a bit of a refresher spray paint ping okay. thing. Okay. And I think this might be a good kit to do it. Yeah, now, the question I have for you is, should I put on as much as possible and then spray it or spray each mm. piece individually? Despite this, uh, if you look at the falcon here, despite yeah. all these uh, extra pieces being the same color, yeah. you don't really want to uh, paint them all together. You're gonna, okay. Your best option is to assemble like the guns and the dishes. Let's pull this out. That's a and better picture. That's the, that's the marking guy. Yeah. And uh, your best bet is to actually assemble these kind of things. Oh, it's hard to get in the shot. It's so big, Ryan. <laughs> assemble these things afterwards. Okay. Spray paint this as it is and then put them together. So, okay, so do as much of the main yeah, as possible gonna, and do the peripherals later. Yeah, do your, build this as an assembly, build this as an assembly, but don't uh, put it with the big pieces before you start painting. So I can assemble these and then mm -hmm. spray paint the whole thing, spray yeah. paint all of this, and then just snap it all together. Yeah, that's more or less what you okay, can do. Cool. And especially when you get down to the landing gears and these yeah. movable uh, openings and stuff, yeah. that's what you're going to have to do. Okay, you can't cool. spray it all together. Okay. Yeah? You're going to paint it gold, Ryan? <laughs> I thought it about it. Silver, chrome, like your previous uh, <laughs> Millennium Falcon? Well, the thing with this kit is I'm not going to weather it too much mm -hmm. because my like you've actually got to be quite a good modeler to be able to weather this really well, yeah, especially sporty. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. but um, I think I can probably spray paint it. Well, you do realize that uh, this here is the, the paint they advise you to use. Yeah, right? I might keep it there. simpler. You keep it simple. Ryan. Keep it simple. But we will be showing the spray painting on the show. Yeah, we'll we'll try and yeah. get it on the show. Everybody can see. We've so had some comments recently. People asking, what do I do? How do I start? Yeah. When it comes to painting, so we will uh, do our best again. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be informative, and you'll watch me trying to spray paint. Yeah. But um, I'll also cool. be showing some gluing as well of the major pieces. Mm -hmm. So yeah, enjoy me on the adventure of the Falcon. Okay. You can do the Tesla Quest Kessel Run in 12 parsecs. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> but I think yours. Will a not parsec be able to do is that. a measure of time, not of distance I or know. something. I know. I saw that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yes. And um, yeah, so Sid. Yeah. You're next. I am next. And you know what I'm going to show today? I have an idea, but why don't you tell everyone? I'm going to show D style, or as they say in Japan, D style. Although they can't even say the D, it has to be the K with the E. Uh, we've been doing big stuff lately. We've been doing the mega size Gundam, the full armor Gundam. Go big or go home. Yeah. That's what she said. Hey, hey. Over there. And uh, you want to do that Millennium Falcon, which is bigger than everything. So I'm going the opposite way. I always find it a good policy in life to do the opposite of this guy. So I'm actually going small, and I've got the D style. D style for, are from Kotobukiya, and they take uh, popular anime and TV show characters, and they make them into this uh, cute deformed style, similar to the uh, super SD. deformed Gundams yeah, okay. that we saw here. But these are actually a little bit more advanced, which is, explains the higher price point. Yes. And uh, we're going to get a look at these in depth. So first off, every, anybody who knows Pat Labor will recognize the, the Zero here. Great show. Yeah. Actually, that's an anime I have watched. Yes. And enjoyed it thoroughly. And there's the Ingram too. It's from Pat Labor. There's, there's a lot of D-style kits. I didn't actually realize how many there are. I mean, there's the Griffin. We saw this at a Oh, we have a bunch. Yes. Uh, the Griffin is pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get some more bang from your buck, here's a limited edition Ingram and Griffin battle set. So you're going to get this kit and yeah. the, uh, the Ingram kit here. And uh, you actually get this actually mobile based. Oh, that is cool. Battle. It says limited edition on the box. And I don't yeah. know if it's limited to uh, a time frame or a number of units. Okay. So, Kotobuki's game plan for this, I'm not sure of, but it's a limited edition, so people who like that stuff might want to pick it up sooner rather than later. That's a cool base. Yeah. It's actually really nice. And here's the Arbalist. A little Arbalist. It actually looks pretty good, with, yeah. even with the deformed head. Here's the Gun Buster. <laughs> Gun Buster. What? This? Yeah. Actually, different. I must say, Kotobuki artwork. Yeah. Kotobuki. They always have great art. I think actually their kits are also. They also look really well. It's just mm. the implementation of that design yeah. sometimes. It's a little lacking. Actually, I took a sneak peek in this box. And I, oh, I thought that? it might be, I really like the colors on yeah, this one. Especially like, if you get an SD, Bandai, you're yeah. going to be paying six to 800 yen or less. Yeah. And all these kind of things would be stickers. Yeah. And even just big ones you slap on the entire piece. But with the Kotobuki stuff, what they give you is this actual painted piece to start yeah. with. 
And it's, it's really, a great really color combination as well. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. really cool. Yeah. I have a tiger bite. All right. It gets, <laughs> it gets more advanced now. People, uh, we've shown Armored Core on the show before. Yeah. And uh, this here's the supplies. This is the uh, the oh, nice. D style. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And here's the white glint. And uh, this I uh, sold out when it was first released there yeah. a year or so ago. And uh, the original white glint, the the monstrosity of a model kit, that's nine thousand six hundred yen. That was discontinued for a while, but I just uh, looked on our site and it says uh, oh. restock, so it looks like it's coming back. So uh, for the people who weren't able to get a hold of the, the monster white glint, they were busy building up the, S the D style. Oh. But now uh, both are back. Both are on the yeah. Way. And you can see when you compare this to, I actually got one right here. We showed SD Gundam on a previous episode of Gundam TV. <laughs> we chose the crossbow. Hey, SD Gundam. And he, let's just compare our white glint to the SD Gundam. Uh, Kodobukiya, they, they definitely are giving you quite a bit of extra stuff compared to the you know, yeah. stuff. But I think the market is quite different as well. These, you'll get little kids assembling, whereas these, most of the time, is just modeling adults. But I think these are pretty straightforward. Like you won't have to spend a lot of time on it, but you no. get a lot of detail, which yeah. is which and is they sweet. Provide, you know, like we said, the markings and stuff. Yeah. Everything is is here for you. Some will have markings, some won't. But I like the finish on their plastic as well. Like mm. I don't know, it doesn't seem as plasticky. No, it's hard to say. Yeah. I'm gonna refrain from commenting on that. Okay. Uh, now here's here's another comparison. Here's the blade leaguer um. or liger. This, this is the Zoids. Mm -hmm. And when this kit was originally released, <laughs> that's what it looks like. And uh, the recent uh, good old D Now you built this set with some we built We built a uh, Sabre on yeah. the show. Yeah. And it was quite a build. It took a long time. Yeah, And I didn't realize that at the time that you could get. So this was the easier option. <laughs> I mean, I actually kind of prefer the look of the D style. Yeah. Especially as an as a zoid, like an animal. Yeah, it's, it's quite cute. Like yeah. you get it's a little, little puppy, little dude in there. Yeah, yeah it's very cute. cute. So rather than just show you boxes as well, I'm going to show one of these actually something. Sid did what he's paid to do. We just so build I'm, kids. I'm not paid to do this, but I did this at home uh, yeah. last night. Trooper. Yeah. And more or less, uh, what you see is what you get here. But I, I, with this kit. I like how they give you the, these painted parts. Mm. These are supposed to be like this, uh, this I guess this, how you say, rubber yeah. that's in the joints, which allows it to articulate. So you get it in the shoulders as well, and in the knee and uh, leg joints. And notice how it, they give you all the markings already. Like all oh. these are already on. Like I didn't put these on. These come painted onto the kit. Same with the, no the number ones on the shoulders here. This is how it came. It came. Yeah, it's, it's great. And then, of course, you get the, the clear parts yeah. for the, there. And this little logo as well. And more or less, it's it's like an SD in that all the joints are going to attach just by polycaps. It's like this. And the polycaps are very similar in size to uh, what you find okay. in the Bandai kits. Yeah. Yeah. So rubber. Extra oh. ones here. This guy actually comes with his uh, police baton. And his revolver. And a revolver. And revolver. How awesome is that? Yeah. So if you want to see any more D-style stuff on the show, let us know. No. We're uh, trying to show as much stuff as we can. And this is our first look into this series. And uh, there's quite a few of them, but we thought we'd show the, the basic yeah. Ingram, first of all. Let's put these two guys Rather than there. show, yeah, exactly. Rather than show a build on the show, we yeah. can show the finished product. Because there's not much to show. I built this uh, Ingram. In about uh, 45 minutes at my house last night. Yeah, it's really cool. Even the clear parts slide on pretty well. And, and it even has uh, quite a lot of movement compared to uh, this guy <laughs> who's not moving at all. I guess he doesn't have knees. in the ankles here. I do. Okay, so yeah, you get a lot more articulation. Yeah. It's actually really good. I'm really glad I uh, brought this baby out. Come on, stay put. Yeah. So cute. There we go. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Yeah, I know. Is there a big difference in price? Uh, well, like I said before, like if you're looking at an SD Gundam, I think the starting price is like five, six hundred yen, yeah. and our price would be like four hundred yen. Yeah. But they can go up to like uh, fifteen hundred yen mm -hmm. for the big Shatri and things like that, two thousand yen. 
But this, these ones tend to start at like 12,000, 14,000. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Not I too mean, bad. some of the more advanced ones, the white glint here, yeah. I believe is 2,000 yen to start. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's quite a comprehensive bow. Yeah, but yeah. you get a lot more. Yeah. It's, it's, they're comparable in price to some of the HGs, but uh, as, a, as a smaller D style, as a super deformed style kit, it's, it's a good, yeah. good investment, I guess. Not bad. Kawaii. That's all I had to show today. Yes, I, well, I wanted to make a point of um, you know, our last episode where we showed that full armor gun, 37 minutes long. But also, like, to build that kit took you I know. a lot of time. <laughs> so I think we can do some questions next. Yeah, we're going to do questions and we'll be finished uh, with this episode. Next week, we sh I should have more anyway. Oh, I, was pretty, I was pretty slack. But, uh, okay. Now, the first question is from Jacob Lee. Okay. Okay, it was basically... We used to have uh, podcasts on iTunes, and mm -hmm. they've come down recently. That was just because uh, we had some technical difficulties, which we're going to resolve, and hopefully we, they'll all be back soonish. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How but many people actually do the podcast thing as opposed to just watching it on I YouTube? don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. One thing to ask the viewers. Like, oh know. yeah, yeah. If you actually use iTunes to watch our shows, leave mm -hmm. us a comment on like YouTube or Facebook, just mm -hmm. so we know. So yeah. So I know. I mean, it's kind of handy if you have the, um, the like Apple Media Hub. Yeah. You can kind of watch it on your TV mm -hmm. whenever you want. But yeah. Okay. So, okay. This. Hello, Sid and Ryan. I've been watching HLJV's HLJ TV since episode one, and I actually have a few questions. I am somewhat new to painting gunpla, and I just recently decided to paint an HG. One one hundredth forty four scale Zeta Gundam. I bought spray nice. paint and primer, and primed and spray painted them, but it did not turn out the way I want, wanted it. I believe it may have been in the paint. So my question is, what is the best kind of spray paint to use on Gumpla? Such as the thickness of the paint, how many coats to use, and what not. Um, I always prefer to go with Tamiya or Mr. Color. Mm -hmm. uh, they're easy for me to get here, which okay. is probably the main reason. Okay. But uh, Tamiya, I find. Uh, sticks really well it doesn't run i mean it's made for modeling it's a modeling paint and also in in the tamiya you're getting more in the can than you're doing the mr hobby so i just usually grab okay. the, the, the tamiya for people outside of japan it's a little different tamiya can be get expensive but there's still a lot of good uh modeling paint out there okay ask around your local hobby shops you know message boards and things like that people all people will, will recommend something and, you know, and give the reasons why. Okay, cool. Now, I mean, I guess I'll have to get more into this when we look at spraying the falcon. If you think uh, if you're using like a Tamiya paint and you think it's too thick, chances are you're just too close when you're spraying. Okay. Or it's the humidity is really high outside. You know, okay. Things like that. So. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Um, I found this pretty interesting. It was about chrome kits. The falcon mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. Um, before you do any assembly, take the parts trees and soak them in automated automotive degreaser for a day or two mm -hmm. and the chrome should come right off it may take a bit of scrubbing or further soaking and you'll be left with a normal kit ready to paint so you could buy the chrome gundam from us chrome get rid of the falcon. chrome yeah. and you'd have a falcon at a very good price that's not uncommon for people to do yeah of course you know, if they <laughs> want to get a hold of something but only come to something else <laughs> Okay, next. Degreaser works well, and you know, uh, paint thinner yeah. will often take off that, that layer of chrome or necky or whatever they put on it. You don't want to sand it, because you'll be there forever. Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. This is a, speaking of PSN IDs, uh, have either of you picked up Gundam Extreme 5 for the PS3? Versus. Versus? A lot of players in the West, and it would be a good laugh to be able to play against you. I do not yet have Gundam Extreme Versus. I have the previous Gundam game. But you played it quite a bit, hey, the one before. Uh, I did play it quite a bit. I tried to unlock all the suits. There's so many suits in that game. But uh, I got a Muso 3, or yeah, I, I got about halfway done. And yeah. just, oh, what do I have to do to, to finish this? Like, Is it a story? There, there's so many different storylines in the yeah. kind of Muso 3 to follow. And uh, as you use one suit, you unlock more along that storyline tree kind of oh, thing. Okay. It's actually like that for bank. Bang for your buck, value. You know, mm -hmm. the amount of time you can spend on the game compared to what you pay is actually pretty high. Okay. But I haven't played uh, Gundam Ex Extreme Versus yet, although okay. I have people asking me to get it. I don't know if that's going to help. Although speaking of PSN IDs, I had thought if there's enough people out there that want to play, I will create a PSN ID. You know, Hobby Link, TV, Sid, 
and we can play that way. We can arrange game sessions and stuff like that. Sid is a uh, quite there. quite the the master. No, I'm not at all. That's yeah, why yeah. I have to create He's... this this ID just for the purpose of getting my butt kicked <laughs> by people from around the world. Yeah, I would get back on, but yeah. I don't know. There's enough people. I'll jump on. Yeah. Okay, final question. Hello, Sid and Ryan. I'm wondering, since Ryan is into big kits, why hasn't he tackled the HG1144 scale Dendrobium Orchis, since it's a monster of a kit to begin with? Why have I not heard about this? Sid? Maybe you have how, not heard about how this. How big is this thing? Way back when, I think it was episode 25, we shot this little skit. Was, was carrying, that the huge I one? I was carrying this big box up to you, and I'm like, why am I with this one? And you know what else? That was the first time you ever said, that's what she said. Now I'm just going to say that she <laughs> said that. I know you like big kits, but yeah. maybe not today. Maybe it's better, yeah? yeah? Yeah, that's what she said, mate. <laughs> we'll, totally <laughs> we'll go wow. back out in the warehouse and I'll show you that. Part. Is it like millions of little pieces? Uh, it's, it's not millions of little pieces because it's an HG kit. It's just that it is... You know, the, the suit, HD suit sounds like this. Yeah. And it, it's this like monster spaceship oh. this thing is supposed to like be in. And it is like this big. It is enormous. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to, to look into it. I'll have to happen. look into it. Yeah. If it's big with very big pieces, I'm fine. <laughs> no <problem. laughs> OK, well, that's all. That's all for today? That's all. OK, uh, coming up in the next few weeks, people have been asking for uh, kit bashing and modifications and things yes. like that. We'll start to show a bit of that, as well as, of course, all the latest releases. And the Millennium Falcon. And the Millennium Falcon. Let's hope I finish this one. Yeah. <laughs> You'll do fine. <laughs> Just don't, don't finish it and then think like 10, 15 years later, you know what, if, if I could do this again, I would do this and then do something else to it. And Maybe I'll do a 3G, 3D version. <laughs> I want to do a do chrome, that. I want to do gold, but not so now. Yeah, but. No. Anyway, right. Sid, right. I'd like to thank everyone. Yes. And uh, we're happy to be back. We've got actually so many people saying thanks for being yeah. back. Yeah, the, and thank I was, you. Uh, I was pleased and surprised yeah, to see yeah, that yeah. people welcoming us back. They must have missed us, which warms the last cockle of my heart. <laughs> you so, have a heart. And only one cockle left. <laughs> so it, it's, uh, it's good feelings. It makes me want to build more and show yeah. more. So that's what we're going to be doing coming up. Sweet. Stay tuned. Thank you and bye. See you later.